Hi, Natasha here, sports dietitian at NMC Nutrition. Today we're gonna to talk about how to calculate ideal body weight in athletes. So just a quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can watch more of these videos. First off, let's be sure to remember that we're not supposed to use the scale when calculating ideal body weight in athletes. So what we wanna remember is the scale varies tremendously. So let's say you've had um, more salt in a meal or more carbs, you can put on a couple pounds uh, overnight and it's not associated to a body fat gain, for example. Also, if you're dehydrated, an athlete can lose five to six pounds uh, in a training session, in a race, in a game. And so we don't want to believe that this is associated to weight, it's really a fluctuation of hydration. It's also not accurate in calculating um, ideal body weight because the scale does not uh, distinguish the difference between bone mass, muscle mass, and fat mass, okay? So that's something we really need to be aware of. Now, because of this, we don't want to use the BMI or body mass index in athletes. So the calculation is actually weight divided by your height squared. So in an athlete who just put on 10 pounds, let's say, of muscle mass in the off season, the scale will show a 10 pound weight gain and the body mass will actually show uh, an increase in BMI towards being overweight. Okay, so this is something we need to be very aware of. In an athlete who is very dehydrated, the BMI is going to reduce or who's maybe um, limiting their food intake, uh, restricting their food intake significantly and, and losing muscle mass as well, then the BMI will reduce uh, as well. And so unfortunately, this is a means of calculation that is used in many high school curriculums. And I, as a practitioner, see a wave of athletes every year who tend to have a uh, tendencies towards eating disorders and they can all pin it back to when they were in class and they had to calculate their BMI and while calculating their BMI, uh, they uh, realized that they were in the overweight category. And this happens often, uh, whether that be in swimmers and uh, figure skaters and dancers, a lot of the aesthetic sports, uh, but in most athletes, because their body mass is so great. Uh, and so this is something we have to be very aware of and very careful with. Now, some scales, are the the higher tech skills will tell you what your body fat percentage is and I have a lot of athletes who've asked questions about that so what it is it's uh, bioimpedance so an electrical current some of it is the scale some people have the handheld one and the issue here is that the air margin is quite high and just like BMI it's going to suggest a much higher um, fat percentage than what is actually the case. Now, the direction suggests that you cannot be dehydrated to do this test if you want proper results. Now, just to let you know, if you've been thirsty, then thirst is generally a sign that you're at least 2% dehydrated. So thirst is very prevalent and dehydration is very prevalent in most athletes on a day-to-day -day basis. A study actually showed that up to 66% of uh, hockey players showed up to a game dehydrated prior to the game even starting. So these are things we have to be very aware of. The uh, directions also suggest that in order to calculate that body fat, you do not want to have done any physical activity for the past 24 to 48 hours. Now this is also rare in athletes and it suggests that you should not have caffeine in your body. So the air margin is considerably high or, or the in terms of the percentage body fat suggested compared to what it actually is. So what do you do? First off in very young athletes and children, what I'm gonna suggest is that you follow growth curves. Um, that can be done with your family physician, just talking to your family physician if the child followed their growth curve uh, since, since a young age. Now for teens and adults, what we are suggesting is if you're looking to maximize power to rate, rate sorry, power to weight ratio specifically for your sport, um, then what you want to do is you want to do use skin folds and you want to go see someone who is actually qualified to do skin fold calculations. Now the course for qualifying uh, someone for that is called the ISIC course and ISIC is the International uh, Society of Advancement in Kinanthropometry. So that's a course uh, where the instructors will actually give uh, quite a bit of, of uh, 
guidance and education and so on, but then there's also a practical application to it. And this course has to be uh, done again every four years to make sure that the practitioner is actually utilizing the proper techniques so there's, that there's a very low error margin. The practitioner also has to be using the proper tools. So this is what we call the skin fold calipers. And there's a lot of different calipers out there, but you wanna make sure that the practitioner who's using them on you is using the a quality type of caliper that can be um, calibrated. Uh, these are the Harpender uh, ones from Europe and you want to make sure that they're properly calibrated so that you get a very uh, low error margin. And when athletes actually do this, they're, act they're often uh, reassured by the numbers because they do believe that their body fat's much higher than what it actually is. Now, is it possible to have a body fat that is too low? Yes. So women and men's body fat, uh, women should be higher than men. And so the range is different for both. For a performance, from a performance standpoint, if a swimmer has a body fat that's too low, what's gonna end up happening is they're going to use more energy to for buoyancy than they will to advance. So, so I guess they're gonna lose energy uh, in terms of what they're using for buoyancy. So the advancing process is going to be a tiny bit slower. So they don't wanna have too much of a low body fat. When it comes to certain sports uh, where there can be a bit more impact, they wanna make sure to have a little bit more protection in, in that case as well. Now, there's certain vitamins, we call them liposoluble vitamins that are absorbed in the fat in our body. And if we don't have enough body fat, then what ends up happening is we can't absorb those vitamins. So for example, vitamin D is liposoluble, it's absorbed in our fat. So if we don't have enough vitamin D, if we have a deficiency in vitamin D, it, it affects our ability for explosiveness. And of course, explosiveness is very important in most sports, okay? So it is possible to be too low. The big question you should ask yourself if you're looking to calculate ideal body weight and uh, most athletes don't ask themselves this question is why? Why do you want to calculate ideal body weight? If you're looking for performance improvements, yes, there can be a slight performance improvements if you have the right body to uh, power to weight ratio, but that's something you should strive for after you've made sure to focus on the bigger issues, which is, do I have proper fueling? Studies show that you can improve uh, performance by up to 17% in terms of speed if you have proper fueling. Uh, dehydration, uh, the sports dietitians Australia suggest that dehydration reduces um, power output, reaction time, strength, endurance capacity by up to 30%. Okay, so this is something that should be paid attention to. If you have an iron deficiency, for example, you can reduce your body fat as much as you want, but if you have an iron deficiency, you're not going to see um, that power improvement as much as you'd want to because you've got an underlying issue. Sometimes sleep is the issue, sometimes it's an overtraining issue. So before you look into improving your power to weight ratio, just make sure you've addressed some of the bigger components that'll give you a bigger uh, bang for your buck, we'll say, or a bigger improvement uh, for the effort that you're putting in. So consult with sports science professionals, sports dietitians, sports psychologists, um, kinesiologists, exercise physiologists to help make sure that you are working in all these aspects. And then once you get to the, the small tweaks, this is when we will uh, really work the power to weight ratio as well. So just make sure you're not um, prioritizing the power to weight ratio over some of the other components that are just as and even more important. Okay, so hopefully you've liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share please, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Again, nutrition is a science, not an opinion. Thanks.